Today we're back in the garage and we're finally gonna get a proper two rear end on the back of my 350Z drift car. Now if you saw the last video where I tried to tackle this myself, you know that I had no idea what I was doing and I have a lot to learn, which is why today I'm not tackling this job alone. I've got a group of friends coming over that are a lot more qualified than I am and with their knowledge and skill and the little bit of knowledge and skill I have, finally gonna get a proper rear end on the back of this thing. A few other jobs we got to tackle today. Nate is coming over to give us a hand on the wiring. I want to fix some of the connection issues we have because even with the brand new Optima battery, we are still having some hard cranking issues. Um, the car starts every time. It just is kind of acting like it has lower voltage. And I think it's just a connection issue with some of the kill switches or connections that I did for that whole setup. But like I said, the main focus is going to be that tuber end. So let's get everybody here, start fabricating. Working on eight. We are gonna make this switch, this battery disconnect, actually work in case the uh, the worst happens. We're gonna redo it. Hopefully, alleviate his starting issues too. We found some anomalies in his old wiring. All right, go ahead, pull it. Just yank it. It's so stuck, dude. <laughs> Three, focus on this bar and pull it into, into, it, into yeah. this part. Also, so, okay, so we go. You're gonna want to always try to keep this little stick out of possible. Yeah, make sure, yeah, that's all. Let me see that. Looks great. Now I was just gonna hammer this down. Okay. Go ahead and take over. You like to actually see? No. A little harder for you all either. Oh, okay. No, honestly, yeah, yeah. that was the first one I used. I borrowed my friends like, and I <laughs> works good. Like tag really so uh, it, I don't warp the sheet metal too much. Okay, here you go. So I'm just gonna, I'm just doing like tack weld basically, so it doesn't warp this too much. That makes sense. Yeah. So you focus all your heat into here, uh -huh. and then you, oh, makes sense. And drag it over to your sheet metal, the yeah. thin part. You want the tail light out of the way? No. Nah. All right, so we're gonna remake this thing for the other side. Let me show you guys how I bent this. Follow me. Yeah. This is all you need to be a master fabricator. Perfect bend. <laughs> Almost perfect. That's it. I amaze myself. Alright. Pretty good fitment. I mean, considering what this car has been through. Um, kind of like a banana peel from Mario Kart. Because if anyone even looks at your bumper, it'll fall off. Yeah. I mean, he's pretty much always held on by two. Because you need every advantage in, yeah. this, in this car. Yeah. Yeah. Banana peels it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And, it is, and it will be yellow. Too, so. That's true, yeah. All right, we're making some progress. I knocked out the bumper tabs. As you guys saw, I just did a little piece of tube kind of out from where the taillight is. That wraps around and we just did a little metal tab off that to hold a zip tie. So a zip tie on each corner, a zip tie on our new little mounts, and the rear bumper looks great. You can see we've just got a zip tie off our little bar there and that's the extent of it pretty happy with that up next we're building the actual crash structure that's going to be built off the back of this thing so if we do get into the wall it won't get totaled uh, cam and chris have been killing it so far with that meanwhile nate has been finding all kinds of little wiring issues that are going to point to why this thing was having issues starting and we're fixing them all one at a time when i say we i mean nate we got everything recrimped we got everything, the alternator and starter divorced, so they're on their own lines. Should be good. Good. What I would want is, well, the, the 40 
25 means all of this mm -hmm. can cave it. That's cool. So like oh, you, as opposed you, to just hitting a 90. As opposed to hitting your bar yeah. and then pulling you into the wall. And also, if you this a, can just collapse. If right, you put a 45, you could essentially, you could, in the future, you could put those sidebar batch bars. Well, I wasn't even thinking like attaching it to this. I meant like this is the side bash bar. Oh, I see. So if you hit it, it just comes into so here and it can't, oh, okay. it can't so get into there. So you're going to sit like that. Because yeah. ideally you want... Yeah. You want that question? Yeah, that's no issue. Just go boom. Go yeah, and then I go just double check um, it before I. I would it say this is what I mean. I mean, you're no. Yeah, I mean. just do a little cut yeah. or like maybe leave a tiny little gap. Yeah. All right, what do we got? Eh. <laughs> we got the main bars coming off the chassis. Uh, I'm just coping them right now by hand because uh, we don't have a coper. So I'm figuring it out, but let me get this thing done. Should be close enough-ish to, you know, fill those gaps. Okay. What? That's too deep, is it? It's a little, a little to the left, man. Alright. Yeah, I know. I'm doing a little more on this side. Alright. Down with the What are we doing with nine inches? Was that center to center? Yeah, it was center to center. So right there? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. We're fabbing. We're talking about. I'm going to grab Pepsi then. Oh, okay. Let's go easy. Come back with pizza. Hey, that firewall better be done before we get back. <laughs> and it like flaps in the air. No, no. I've tried to fix it multiple times. It just keeps What's up, guys? <laughs> and then uh, an order of breadsticks. Bread crazy crazy bread. bread. You better yeah. not drop that shit. I, I won't. I got, I got a lock down right now. It's locked in, brother. Oh, oh <laughs> dude, it already. <laughs> Carson, what? What? No, now I got it locked in. Are you sure? I'm sure. Okay. Hey, big welder, man. Yeah, hold on. Where's the ground at? Ground it correctly. Call me a little titty. I'm over here trying to do work. I was right? trying to help him. He gets all up to you. I have. I just do it. Yeah, probably. This would be easy to remake. That's the whole point. No, but micros. Yeah, you're a guest. Oh. Okay, I'm good on this side. Okay, if you're good, I'm good. That looks close enough to center, right? You can just line it up with the jack point. <laughs> oh, Chris is good. <laughs> I was waiting to get the shot of Tony just staring at it. This takes four years to... How much heat does Nate put into it? Not enough to pull it? No, I don't think so. Okay. Really nice. Oh, you got it. Wait, we're good? Yeah, you're good. Get out of here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is. Because there's probably slag in yeah, the... Yeah, you got a slag thing in here. Oh, there it is. There we go. Okay, let me... There, we go. there hand me those first, please. What? Watch out, look out, look no, out, look out, look out, look out, look out! Okay. I'm done! Easy! Yeah. <laughs> As he fucking burns himself. That's a beautiful man right there. Why, thank you. And just like that, the two brew is done. Big thanks to everybody who came over to help. Couldn't have done it without all you guys. And I'm super happy with the way everything turned out. 
Let me give you a little closer look now that it's all done. Really simple, straightforward setup. Obviously we have the one bar here with 45s on each end and then just straight bars right off these plates we made. Plates are pretty simple too. Just welded one to the chassis with nuts on the back and then obviously bolts to the front. So we can unbolt this thing and replace it if we have to. And then of course you guys saw my bumper mount here, real simple. And I wanna talk a little bit about why we decided to make the bar like this as opposed to doing like a 90 off each one and just running it around. So the idea for the 45s kind of just freestanding off in the corner is that if I do get into the wall, one, there's about a foot of room for the bumper, taillight, and everything to flex before I get into any metal at all. And then if I do get into that actual bash bar, that little freestanding corner is gonna bend, slow the car down, slow the impact down, as opposed to if it was a solid 90 degree bend and you put that into the wall, it's probably not gonna give a whole lot, and what that would do is push the front end into the car. At least it's a lot more likely to do that. So by leaving kind of a weak link of the freestanding bar off to the side, it should kind of work as like an impact zone almost to where it's gonna slow the inertia down after impact and hopefully do a lot less damage overall. And again, that's why we made that bar removable. So if that does happen and I do bend the bar, you just unbolt it, throw it away and make a new one. And it's super simple to make with, with just two bends. So like I said, super happy with the way everything came out. We're gonna be putting it to the test. In just a few days, we'll be doing a test and tune day actually at Irwindale, getting ready for Hot Pit, which reminds me the next round of Hot Pit is July 27th at Irwindale Speedway. Here's a little promo for that. Get your tickets, get there, see this thing in action. You'll get to see all the cool Liberty Watt cars, plus Hibino himself driving that insane S15. I know I'm stoked to get back out there. This car is getting better and better every round. My driving is getting better. We just need a little bit better luck on that chip draw. And fingers crossed we get out of the death match this time. But that's gonna be a wrap on this video. I've still got some work to do to tie this thing up. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It was kind of a chill, laid back video, just hanging out with all the boys, getting some work done. So let me know what you think of that. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and of course, catch you in the next one.